Hello and welcome to today's Market Matters video update. I'm Harry Watt, joined by James Gerrish. It is Monday, the 6th of May. That means April's in the book. So we're going to talk about the Market Matters portfolio's performance for last month. We're also going to give three key ideas of where we're positioned moving forward, heading into the back end of FY24, mm -hmm. if you can believe it. Uh, but first things first, April uh, markets were a little bit jittery. So overall, what was going on within equity markets last month, James? Yeah, you're right, Harry. So we had obviously a couple of really strong months to start the year. So the first quarter was really strong uh, for equities. And then April of, uh, April has given back some of that uh, performance on the index level. So the ASX 200 accumulation index fell 2.94%. So a, uh, you know, a reasonable pullback in terms of markets. If I look internationally, um, the MSCI World Index in Aussie dollar terms pulled back over three uh, percent, and then the uh, the emerging companies, uh, sorry, the small companies accumulation index uh, was pulling back over three percent as well. So uh, softness right across the board in equities. The biggest driver of that, Harry, was around uh, interest rate expectations. We've had firming economic data suggesting that um, you know inflation's being a little bit stickier, growth being a little bit stickier. Uh, and interest rate cuts are not going to come in the time frame that the market was expecting. Uh, in the US, uh, we're still pricing in uh, nearly two interest rate cuts this side of Christmas in terms of market pricing. But in Australia, we're actually pricing a 40% chance of, any, of a rate increase being the next move. I think that's a little bit overdone, um, but that's what drove equities during April, and that's what led to weakness uh, across the market. So uh, we've been, you know, we write about this a lot, but bond markets, the macro environment is very influential in terms of where equities uh, go. And that was certainly the case in April, Harry. Uh, given that backdrop, a massive swing from you know rate cuts being priced mm. into now rate hikes locally. Uh, we've got five portfolios that we manage uh, on a daily basis. We keep an eye across them. How did those five portfolios fare for market matters during April, given that backdrop of weaker markets? Yeah, so to give you a, just a sense of how we're viewing markets at the moment, we don't think this rhetoric around rising rates uh, will have will come to pass. We think rates, the next move on rates will be down. Uh, we think they'll probably stay higher for longer, so there'll be less cuts overall. But ultimately, uh, lower interest rates in time will be supportive of equities. Uh, so we've maintained a positive bias across our portfolios. Uh, but we did well, relatively speaking, in um, uh, in April. I know when you lose, when your portfolios are lower, um, it's not always you know it's not a great outcome because where you know, you can't eat relative returns, as they say. Uh, but I think it's important when you think about the backdrop of equities uh, and you think about the backdrop of our portfolios when markets were rising over the first three months of the year. So uh, we outperformed in a rising market uh, and now we've largely outperformed in a falling market. So that speaks to sort of the robust nature of the approach. So uh, flat, the uh, the active growth portfolio was down 1.79% uh, in the month of April. That again is versus the uh, uh, accumulation index, which was down nearly 3%. Uh, so about 1.15% outperformance there. Uh, on a one-year view, it's up 15.7%, which is about six and a bit percent above the market. Um, so really positive around that portfolio. The longer-term metrics of that portfolio really stack up. I was actually doing some looking at some data uh, in, uh, in in the last week, just around. So fund monitors are a site that um, looks at or measures managed funds uh, throughout Australia. So Looking at the like funds out there, uh, that portfolio over the three year, uh, from a three year perspective, would be in the top three performing equity funds, large cap uh, only equity funds in Australia. So uh, we're really pleased with that result, Harry, uh, even in a down market. Um, so look, we, we continue to work hard, there's no doubt about that. Um, and our positioning is now set you know, a little bit more towards commodities at this point in time, which is something we'll get onto very shortly. Uh, but a, a strong month, relatively speaking, again, for that portfolio. All right, the income portfolio, obviously very much leveraged to where rates go. Rates had a bit of a backward step in that period. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, how did that income portfolio stack up in April? So it was down 1.06%. So what you want to see in this portfolio is when markets are down, this portfolio is down a lot less than the market. So if you think about the market, it was down nearly 3%. This portfolio is down 1%. It does have an RBA cash plus 4% benchmark, uh, which is obviously higher in the month, nearly 70 basis points higher. So it does underperform its benchmark when uh, the market falls. But if you look at you know a, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the the longer term performance, it continues to stack up. The whole 
premise of this portfolio is lower volatility and consistent income. Lower volatility and consistent income. So uh, that's our um, uh, how the income portfolio um, uh, you know, progresses in the market or is positioned in the market. We're about 55% in equities, about 45% in fixed income, uh, debt securities, hybrids and the like, Harry. All right, the last local portfolio we run, the emerging companies portfolio focused on some smaller companies that uh, may have a little bit more growth in their earnings to come. How did that go in April? Yeah, high risk portfolio. Uh, we've um, uh, we performed well in the month, relatively speaking. So uh, it was down 40 basis points, 0.4% against the uh, benchmark, which was down 3.06%. Uh, so reasonable amount of outperformance in terms of that on a um, on a one-year view, it's up 12, a bit over 12% versus the index, which is up 7%. So uh, some good outperformance on the shorter time periods. Uh, we started if we started calendar 24 saying this portfolio was going to be a focus for us. Uh, we'd been working hard on it, uh, you know, for the for the last uh, couple of years. Hadn't been getting the results that we're after, but we're starting to see that portfolio turn for the better. Uh, and some of the, you know, some of these emerging companies are, are are really looking good from a relative standpoint. So if you look at relative valuations, as we do, uh, some of these smaller companies are starting to really uh, stack up. So it's an area we like in the market, Harry. All right, moving internationally, international portfolio, obviously a little bit more exposed to currency moves as well, but also uh, very much focused on US-based stocks. James, how'd that portfolio go? Yeah, for the month it was down 2.2%. Uh, the uh, index was down 3.02%, so about 80 points out performance. One year view, it's up 17.6%. It is underperforming its benchmark by about 3% uh, on a one year view. But if you think about inception, any portfolio that's up 18% per annum since inception, um, I'd back it. Um, so that's certainly been, been the case with the international equities portfolio, which is about 5.5% above its benchmark since inception. So uh, it was a case where some there was a lot of divergence between companies uh, over in the US market in April, um, but we're going into, we're about 80% the way through quarterly reporting season in the US. The majority of companies have beaten expectations. Um, I'd highlight a couple that we own that we think reported well. Um, First Solar, I've spoken about that a few times on this um on this platform, uh, they, they reported really strong quarterly numbers. Uh, and we've got um, Albemarle, which is one that we recently added in the lithium space. Um, Apple reported last week, they've rallied 6% after their results. So uh, that portfolio has had a, actually a, quite a good start to this month as well, Harry. So uh, international equity is all going okay. All right, the core ETF portfolio, it's the newest portfolio of the suite it is uh only it's only got one year of performance in the bank now james what are we looking to do with this portfolio and sort of how's it gone to start its life in the uh market matters suite yeah it's had a it's had a good performance i don't have the performance right in front of me but you'll see it on the screen there when this video is uploaded it's um outperformed its benchmark on a one year view uh so it's done exactly what we were hoping for it to do uh, it's a diversified approach, uh, looking at a typically balanced portfolio using low-cost ETFs. Uh, we say it's dynamically managed, so it's uh, within we manage it within asset allocation with an asset allocation framework. But we're largely invested in the market, so uh, it's not really timing uh, uh, the market per se, uh, but it's providing you a structured approach to an asset allocation framework that's tried and tested. Um, really diversified, low cost, et cetera, for the more passive uh, members of Market Matters out there. All right, moving on to three key ideas for uh, for our subscribers here, James. Um, obviously, you've, you've touched on a few themes we're probably going to get into in just a moment, but what's your first big call uh, for, for the next little while in, in terms of equity markets, James? Yeah, I think there's, there's, there's three ideas we've got here, and they're more you know how to tilt portfolios at this current point in time. The first one being... Um, overweight commodities. If you look at our growth portfolio, we're very overweight commodities at this point in time. Areas in the commodity complex we particularly like here are um, uh, uh, lithium stocks. We've got Pilbara, Mineral Resources and Albemarle, uh, as well as GL1 in the very speculative end of the market. Um, but it's a, it's a case where uh, the worm is turning here in terms of lithium prices. Uh, we think the worm is turning in terms of lithium stocks. Um, and now is the time when the market continues to remain bearish on lithium names uh, that uh, is a good time to get set. So we started to see mineral resources and uh, Pilbara to a lesser degree rally. 
Um, Albemarle is the biggest uh, lithium company in the world that we have in our international equities portfolio. We've bought that recently. We think that stacks up. But more broadly, it's not just a lithium call, it's a commodities call. We think commodities are the start of a new bull market that's going to last for a couple of years, uh, and now's the time to be positioning portfolios uh, heavily in that space. No, the ASX already very heavily exposed to commodities, so pretty good sign as a supportive backdrop for the ASX more broadly. We like commodities. Uh, what's your number two call at the moment, James? So number call, number two call is fade the move in rate sensitive stocks. So. By that I mean in the last in the last month in April, interest rates, bond yields have uh, uh, ticked higher. That's put some pressure on the rate sensitive ends of the areas of the market. So uh, property, infrastructure, uh, even IT to a lesser uh, degree. But those areas have pulled back. We think this pullback is a buying opportunity to then uh, retest recent highs. So um, yeah, could just consumer discretionary stocks. We probably think there's you know those, those have pulled back. There's a couple of names that we're interested in at the moment. Um, property, so Goodman Group has pulled back. We think that's going to go and make you uh, highs again. That's one that we're going to continue to back. Centuria uh, in the property space, CNI is one that um, has been weak in the last month. So um, back those rate sensitive names that have pulled back um, that have been trending nicely over the last couple of months before April. And quality into weakness, I think, James. Absolutely. Yeah, quality into weakness. Uh, number three, so we like interest rate leverage names here. Number three call, though, James, something a bit different uh, for subscribers. Well, this is linked to what we just spoke about in terms of commodities, So, um, but it's a little bit different. So everyone has been so negative on China. Be less negative on China. So um, I take that out of, um, you know, you look at some of the China China facing consumer stocks in particular. So it's not just a commodities call. You look at some of these stocks that face the, the Chinese consumer, uh, JD.com, uh, Alibaba, et cetera, they're starting to move. That's an interesting sign around money going back into uh, China facing equities. Um, so, you know, whenever I've brought up China equities in recent times, I was speaking with a financial planner last week about Chinese equities, and they, they, they just didn't want to hear about it. Um, and that's a sign to me that perhaps the, the low is in. We're finding a base in Chinese facing equities, and I think you need to be less bearish on China. Our commodities call f- comes into that, um, but we need to broaden that into consumer names as well. So uh, we're being less bearish on China in the coming months. Yeah, there's a massive catch-up trade to play out here <laughs> if it, if it does yeah. want to get back to... Um, all-time highs certainly there but uh, that's all we've got time for today thanks for joining us as always and uh, as always keep an eye out for those market matters reports